Good evening. My name is C.L. Edwards, and you are viewing the Trinity Channel live streaming via satellite, via Roku, many means. And we are here today to talk about a sober topic, a serious topic. As most of you already know, we've had a great tragedy that has taken place in Turkey, in Istanbul. A terrorist attack with three suicide bombers wearing suicide vests killed almost 50 people and injured well over 200 people. Very evil attack and our hearts and our compassion go out to the victims, they go out to the survivors, they go out to those who are in the hospital, the workers, the um, ambulances, the doctors, everyone who's working to try to treat these people. Our prayers and our compassion go out to them. But when things like this occur, it's not enough just to broadcast that another terror attack, another jihadi attack occurred. Several of them have occurred over the last week. Multitude upon multitude of jihadi attacks have occurred over this past month of Ramadan, and we're at the end of Ramadan now. But it's for us to ask the questions, why? Why is this taking place? Because when we look to the mainstream media, we get several different voices. When we look to the leaders of the West, like the President of the United States of America, Barack Obama, we hear all different types of explanations for what is going on and why these jihad attacks are taking place. If you listen to one group of people, they'll say, these are just isolated incidences. These are people who are off their rocker. They're, they want to be uh, jihadis. They want to be mujahideen, and they're crazy. But it has nothing to do with Islam. It has nothing to do with Islam. Get that out of your head. Don't say that. That's Islamophobia. But then you hear other voices who say, no, this, this has something to do with, it has more than just something to do with Islam. These are mujahideen. These are people who are dedicated themselves to jihad, and they've dedicated themselves to perform jihad during this month of Ramadan. And ISIS made a proclamation on the web at the beginning of Ramadan, before Ramadan began, asking their affiliates, asking those who sympathize with them to perform attacks upon the kuffar, upon those Muslims they consider to be apostate. And this is the fulfillment of those who sympathize, who give their loyalty to al-Baghdadi, the leader of IS, and they're wreaking havoc all over the globe. Now, as evil as the incident in Istanbul was, that is not the only incident that has taken place within the last week. Did you hear me? Within the last week. Let me give you a few headlines. Lebanon fears more attacks after multiple suicide bombings. This just happened this week. Lebanon government warned on Tuesday of a heightened terrorist threat after eight suicide bombers targeted a Christian village at the border of Syria. And they said that this is connected to IS, the Islamic State. But yet there's more. I have a whole stack of headlines. Have you ever heard of Al-Shabaab, the youth? This is a Islamist group in the Horn of Africa who have pledged allegiance to ISIS. They recently assassinated an army colonel in Mogadishu. This just happened Monday. Also, Al-Shabaab performed a bombing at a hotel in Somalia that killed 15 people. That happened on Saturday. Boku Haram, have you heard of them? Islamic knowledge, Islamic learning, I mean, sorry, Western learning is haram, is the meaning of their name. They're very heavy in uh, Nigeria and the surrounding countries. Now, Nigeria has been attacking them and they've been pushed out. Now they're going into Niger and they've entered into Niger and they've been wreaking havoc. They've been invading villages, reaping, stealing, raping, taking women as sex slaves, burning down the villages. They have caused so much havoc this week that the, the fishermen trade on Lake Chad has been shut down. And People are warning that because of their actions of uh, Boko Haram, there is a chance that there could be a starvation crisis in this part of Africa affecting upwards to 20 million people if they're not stopped. In the Philippines, the Philippine, a Filipino Mujahideen had two hostages, two reporters, a male and a female. They let the female go, and they recently, just as of today, it's just reported, they beheaded 
her boyfriend. They beheaded him. This is in the Philippines. Grenade attack in Malaysia. A bar was blown to bits through a grenade attack to someone who called, who put on Facebook that they pledged allegiance to ISIS, the Islamic State. Islamic a terrorist in German, in Germany, a, a market near a mosque, across the street from a mosque in Germany, has been raided and they found a stockpile of weapons, military grade war weapons. And that's just, I have tons of more headlines I could go through. That's just this one week, and that's not the whole entire month. We all remember what happened in Orlando with Omar Matin. Now, my first guest tonight is someone, some of you may know and some of you may not know, and that is Christian Prince. He's written several books. He's been on the forefront of Christian apologetics. He's confronted Islam. Um, let's give a warm welcome to our guest, Christian Prince. Are you there, Christian Prince? Uh, yes, thank you very much. God bless. And uh, I want to say thank you for Trinity Channel for uh, uh, hosting this show. And I hope today uh, we will learn the truth and only the truth and the truth will set us free. Amen. Amen. Let us be. This is not Islamophobia. This Absolutely. is uh, this is the exposure of truth. Yes. And, you know, uh, actually, actually, what? Islamophobia, Islamophobia is a, is, is a topic by itself. Mm. You know, uh, the question we should ask, why people, they have Islamophobia, not Hindophobia? Why people have Islamophobia, not Buddhaphobia? Mm. Why Islam causing the phobia? You know, there is, you know, phobia is a, just a lie created by the, 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 the many of the Muslims and supported by the left, trying to say that there is no risk and there is no danger of Islam, when the fact nobody there, even to go to the airport without security check because of Islam. Until 9-11, we used to go to the airplane and we are free from any security. Everybody remember. Yeah. We used to go and walk. You can take your family to the airplane door. They give you a hug and you go. Yeah. Until 9-11. And since then, no security, no safety whatsoever because of Islamophobia or Islamo-terrorist. <laughs> uh, you know? it, it seems like... Um they will say that Islamophobia is an irrational fear of Islam, but it seems like it would be rational to fear an ideology that would cause over almost counting at this point 12 jihadi incidents in this one week. And I'm sure there are more that I haven't found. That seems rational, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, everything is upside down. And, you know, these days the one who said the truth uh, they they call him Islamophobia. Yes. So if saying the truth is Islamophobia, no problem. You can call us whatever you want. And the fact, all of them, they are the one is suffering from Islamophobia to the point they don't dare. I mean, like, why they don't dare even to say in the TV station that Muhammad he ordered to kill? Why they don't dare even like you see like uh, Russia TV? They say the Prophet Muhammad. They don't dare to say Muhammad. They have to say the Prophet Muhammad because they are afraid that somebody would hear them and would be upset. But they say the name of Jesus without saying anything, you know? They yeah. say just Jesus. Yeah. So they have no worry from saying Jesus, insulting Jesus, and attacking Jesus, because nobody have a phobia about it, and nobody will kill them for it. And the, 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 the fact the one who have a phobia is the Muslims. Mm -hmm. If we put a cross, Muslims get offended. If we read the Bible, Muslims get offended. If we uh, ring the, the bell, Muslims get offended. If, we, if, if somebody eat pork, Muslims get offended. They are the one who get offended from everything, but yet we are the one who have a phobia. And Muslims, they start their day praying five times a day by mm -hmm. cursing the Christians and the Jews. And yet we are the one who have a phobia, when in fact we are the one who pray for the whole world, including the Muslims, for safety and for better life and to know the truth. We never heard a priest saying, may God curse the Muslims. But the Muslims, they do that always, and it's part of their Quran, chapter 1, verse number 7. Yes, this is true, Al-Fatiha. Um, and you just reminded me of, of another headline uh, recently this same exact week. In uh, Egypt, over a thousand Muslims uh, went on a rampage in a city uh, assaulting and attacking 80 Christian homes because there was a rumor that they were going to start a church. So that was Everything their, uh, is possible. <laughs> they get offended from anything. You know, anything will offend the Muslims, and it doesn't matter what do you do, they are offended. You say, you, you talk, you don't talk, they are offended. 
even if you stay home, just because you are being a Christian, you are offending them. Because by being Christian, you are saying to them, without talking, that I don't believe in your prophet. And this is something offensive for them. So Islam is a religion. Uh, uh, it, it is against any kind of tolerance. And yet everybody speak about the mercy and the beauty of Islam and the, and the, and the, the unjust of uh, saying all Muslims are terrorists. Mm. You know, uh, uh, for whatever I say in this TV, just for everybody to know, I am the one who present myself. I don't pre- represent Trinity, which means Trinity Channel, they have their opinion. They can say whatever they want. Whatever I say, I'm responsible for it. I say every Muslim believe in the Quran is a terrorist because you cannot be a Muslim unless you believe in the manual, which is the Quran. And the manual of the Quran says it clearly, I will install terror in the heart of the disbelievers. Now, you will find many people, they come with many kind of interpretation falsely made just to avoid the accusation against Islam. However, they can come whatever they want. But the life of Muhammad proved that this is what Muhammad meant and this is what Muhammad practiced and this is what Islam is about. However, we are the one who speak Arabic. I am, my first language is Arabic. Not like those who do not know one word in Arabic, but yet they want to teach us what the Quran mean. Mm. Or even they translate the Quran when they do not know how to read Arabic, which is very funny. Uh, this is very true, um, what you're saying. And what you said sounds very hard to some people, especially in this day and age um, where there are certain um, characteristics that are held up as uh, must-haves. You must have tolerance and you must have uh, political correctness. Um, you, you can't say anything about another group. That is a form of phobia, that's racism, that's hate, that's right-wing bigotry. But to say the truth, for me to simply read headlines from well-known um, news organizations, that's Islamophobia. For you to quote the Quran, that's a, Islamophobia. So at this point, as Christians and as people who love truth, We can no longer be afraid of people calling you a name. If you're afraid of someone calling you a name, then you have bigger problems. You have a real big problem. We have to stand boldly for the truth. I I believe we have to stand boldly for the truth. Yes. Now, now do we have today uh, a Muslim uh, with us in the show, uh, brother? Like, uh, I heard that you guys have have a guest. Uh, Is he there or not yet? He's not here yet. He will be here in 15 minutes, God willing. Right. Um, he will be in you, 15 minutes. You know, there is, you, remind me, you remind me of something. Once I was doing a seminar, and that was in the Philippines. Mm. And there was a minister. He is from a Canadian church. It's called Anabaptist. Yes. So uh, uh, he asked me like, uh, like about my seminar, what I do, etc. So I said I teach people about Islam. And then he said to me, I have a Muslim friend. You know, he said the, like he, he don't like what I am saying. So he said to me, you know what, I have Muslim friends. I said, you do, but they don't. He said, no, 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 I have Muslim friends. I said, you do, but they don't. He don't understand what I'm saying. You know, he's not listening. He said, what are you talking about? I told you, I have Muslim friends. I said, you do, because you are a good guy. You take them as a friend. Hmm. But they don't. Muslims are not allowed to take you as a friend. Chapter 5, verse 51. And right away he says, oh, you are the kind who divide people. I said, what divide people? When I quote the Quran, I'm dividing? <laughs> Divide I'm people. not the one is dividing. Is the Quran divide people? Is the Quran saying, take not the Christians and Jews as a friend? So for me, quoting the Quran, you blame me that I am the bad person. Not the verse is saying that it's me. Uh. So I'm just showing you that when you say I have a Muslim of friends, you are very wrong because Muslims cannot take a friend if he uh, unless he is a Muslim. And this is unless correct. they are lying to that you. That is correct. So you say to me, I have Muslim friends. I say, yes, you do, because you are a good guy. You have a good heart. You are a Christian person. You take them as a friend. But Muslims are not allowed to take you as a friend, which means you are always considered as an enemy. This This is is the only meaning, you know, to not to take someone as a friend. And that's our example from uh, Jesus himself, who was a friend to sinners, um, who associated and set, who who, who would be invited to a dinner by a sinner, by a tax collector. And he would accept the, the invitation. And the religious authorities would look down upon him and look at him and say, how could, how could you be a rabbi and go to the dinner invitation from a tax collector? But our Lord would do that, and we follow our Lord if we are true Christians. 
but they follow Muhammad and his companions. And they, they said to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. Correct. And the greatest form of enjoining the good and, and forbidding the evil is with the hand, physically. If you have the power and you have the ability, it is, it is wajib upon you to stop evil and to uh, put into effect the good, and the good is the Sharia. You know, the, the, the term evil and good in Islam, uh, sadly, sometimes some Christians, they think we share the same terms. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when a Muslim, he says Islam is against theft, as an example. They think that this is true. You know, Islam is against theft. Even the Prophet of Allah, he cut the hand of a thief. But they will not tell you that if he steal it from a protected person, Muhammad is the same as a gang leader. If you are under his protected deal, which is converting to Islam, he protect you. You are part of the gang. But if you are not part of the gang, then you, you, somebody stole it from you. It's okay. Actually, he encourages men to steal mm -hmm. from those who they are not part of the gang, which means they are not Muslims. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the word stealing does not have the same meaning in Christianity and in Islam. In Christianity, it doesn't matter. You steal it from who? It is bad. It's against God. It's a sin. You steal it from a Muslim. You steal it from, from a Jew. You steal it from a Hindu. It doesn't matter. You are a thief. In Islam, no. You are a thief only if you steal from someone. He is protected by Allah, which means he is a Muslim. In Islam, adultery have different value, which is, you know, like in Christianity, Jesus, he said, if you look at a woman and you wish her, you committed adultery with, with your heart. A Muslims in their Quran, they believe in something it's called a lemam, which means a Muslim he can look at the woman, he can play with her body. I don't want to speak in, in graphic. He can touch everywhere, and as long as he don't have sexual intercourse, this is not adultery in Islam. This is a, a, a small fault. So adultery in Islam have totally different meaning too, you know, mm -hmm. and that can goes for everything, uh, even even lying. Jesus said, even you, you cannot take an oath. Either you say yay, yay, or nay, nay. You don't say, you don't say by name of God, and you don't lie. Because any lie is coming from the devil. Muhammad, he said, you can lie in three cases. To your friends, to your family, and your enemy. And for God's sake, who left? Who's left? <laughs> if you can lie to those three, <laughs> That's a good point. nobody is left. You know? That's a good point. There's nobody left. I, yeah. I don't know if this was the um, surah that you were referring to no, no, this is in, to this, earlier. No, no, this is in the hadith. No, no, this no. Is in the hadith. I'm just talking about something you said earlier about terror, striking terror in the heart. But I was looking at uh, Surah 8, um, 12, and 13, where it says in the English translation, Remember when your Lord inspired to the angels, I am with you. So stre strengthen those who have believed. I will cast terror into the hearts of those who have dis disbelieved. So strike them upon the nets and strike them upon the every fingertip. Be this is because they oppose Allah and his messenger. Whoever opposes Allah and his messenger, indeed Allah is severe in penalty. I don't know if that yes. was what you were referring to, but... Yes, well, you know, the, the terror in the Quran appear in not only in one place. Yes. Uh, uh, however, uh, uh, Muhammad, he confirmed in the hadith that he been victorious by terror. Mm. And people he used to give up and surrender to him because of his terrorism from a distance of a month. So Muhammad, he understand the power of terror. Like, you know, a few guys can terrify a whole town. If you remember a few years ago, there was a guy, his name is Muhammad in New York, I think. He, they call him Muhammad the Sniper. You know, he terrified the whole city of New York. He's just one guy, and he have a young boy with him. Yes, I remember one that. guy I remember terrified that. the city, city of 9 million people. Why? Because you do not know who's your enemy. You do not know who's going to kill you. You do not know why. And this is terror. So terror is very powerful, and Muslims, they know that by making terror, they can make you subdued. They can put fear on you, and you became scared, and then you do what they want. Hmm. So terror is not really the target Terror is a tool. Islam yeah. uses it in order to fear, to put fear in your heart and make you convert to Islam. Uh, like if you go to chapter 3, verse 151, it says, We are going to put in the heart of those who they are disbelievers the terror. Hmm. For they are disbelievers. Now, why he want to put terror in their heart? Because simply terror is the way to punish them and make them agree. The, the whole point is, 
how to make you subdued to Islam and surrender. Like, you know, even some people, they give you a false meaning of Islam. They say to you, Islam means peace, which yes, is false. Islam yeah. has nothing to do with the word peace. The word peace is salam coming from shalom or shlama in Aramaic. Mm -hmm. uh, the word Islam is the opposite of salam. Like in English, we say known and unknown. So you add the N before known, that will make it unknown. This is exactly the case of Islam. Salam is the word mean peace. Islam is surrender. It's the opposite. It is you surrender, I will not kill you. However, don't ever trust Muslims saying to you, you surrender, we will not kill you. Because this is exactly what Muhammad did with Bani Quraidah. He asked them to surrender. They did. He slaughtered them. Hmm. He slaughtered them all one by one, including children. So you surrender to Islam, still you are not sure really you are going to be safe, you know? Because even after you surrender, there's tons of surprises might happen. And this is a person you cannot trust. Who can trust the devil? You tell me. Uh, I wouldn't trust the devil. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, we, only, exactly. we only have a few minutes before we go into a break and we have our guests come on. Uh, just in these last few minutes, could you like, give, our, give our viewers who may not know, what is Ramadan? What's Ramadan all, all about? What's that? You know, I, I wanted to hear from the Muslim interpretation of Ramadan because we will have him soon. However, oh. supposedly Ramadan is a month where Muslims, they fast for certain amount, a certain time of days mm -hmm. and for certain hours during the day, which means the, 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 the sun rays to the sunset. And they fast from all kind of, uh, kind of activity involved. Uh, uh, food or drinking or even sexual relationship. However, um, I don't see any fasting there because it, you believe it or not, I eat once a day. That's mean I'm fasting Ramadan uh, 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 twice every month. You know, like <laughs> I, I, I eat once every day, which means once every 24 hours. Uh, what a big deal if I fast. Like, don't you go to work? You come back, you know? What if you, what, what the point, what the big deal if you skip your lunch? However, Muslims during the month of Ramadan, they spend their day sleeping. They don't do any activities. They spend their night up eating. And then in the morning, they go to sleep. And then afternoon, they wake up. It's a month where no work is done. Nobody go to work. And if they go, they go for an hour or two. And they will not. It's, it's, it's actually, it's a disaster for economy in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. The whole Middle East is in drugs. Nobody doing any work. Even in the government, they close, like in Saudi Arabia, they close, they close the, 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 the offices by 11, they take a break, and then after that, until 1, and at 1, they open for a half hour, and then they go home, which means nobody doing any work. So the whole country will be in a sleep stage. And yet they say to us, you are fasting, you know. Fasting is someone, he go to work, he work hard, he sweat, and etc. but not the one who spend the night up watching TV and movies, and eating as much as he can. Actually, in the month of Ramadan, all Muslims, they suffer from the increase of weight because they eat up normal. They don't eat the, no, the way it is. This is why the prices of food in Ramadan go skyrocketing. You know, if, if people are fasting, why the, the, why the food go crazy? You know what I mean? If, if, if people abstain from eating, they eat less, the, the food price should drop because it's about demand in the market. Mm -hmm. So if, every, if nobody is buying, like uh, I used to buy one kilogram of meat, let us say, I now I buy uh, 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 half pound or, you know, you know. So if my food decrease, then the price of food should decrease too. But because my food is increasing, the price of food increase. And it go not only increase, it goes so crazy. So this month, it's not a month of mercy no more because the poor guy, he suffer. The only one, I guarantee you, is fasting in the month of Ramadan is the poor man, for he cannot afford to buy the food in this month because the, 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 the price of the food goes so crazy. Mm -hmm. But the rest are not fasting at all. They spend the whole night eating the best of the fruits, the best of the meat, watching. If you see the TV in Ramadan, in the month of Ramadan, you will, you will not believe it. Billy dancers, where is Ramadan? Well, you know, it is the month of hypocrisy. Uh, I, re I remember when I was a kid, uh, once we were leaving a house of, of a, a Muslim boy, he is in my age, and then he said, wait, wait, wait. I said, what? He said, I have to put some salt on my lips. I said, why? He said, it's Ramadan. I said, so? He said, I don't want people to know that we were drinking uh, tea. So he put salt in his mouth to make it look dry, and then I said, he, he said, don't talk to me now. I, you know, I have salt in my mouth. Mm -hmm. 
So until uh, when he's done, I said, how you learn this? He said, my dad, he do it too. And my brother, he do it too. And my mom do it too. So everybody put salt in their lips before they leave the house in order to show themselves that their lips is dry and they are fasting and they did not drink the whole day. But in fact, nobody is fasting. It is a amount of hypocrisy. Oh, and we know that the Lord Jesus Christ said, in, which is recorded in the four Gospels, he said to his disciples and, and all those of Israel who were gathered together uh, to listen to him, he said regarding fasting, he said when you fast and when you pray also, to not let it be known, not to show off to others. In fact, he said, do the opposite of what you just described. He said to get yourself together, wash up, uh, straighten yourself up while you're Absolutely. fasting. So no one was, so you don't project to everyone that you're in a state of fasting. But uh, we see the differences between the Christian worldview and the Islamic worldview. Now, we, we only have a few seconds before we go to the break. So uh, we're going to go to a break for now. And when we come back, hopefully we'll have an additional guest, um, our Muslim guest, who will be with us. And uh, we will continue this dialogue. So please don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. You're viewing the Trinity Channel. I am C.L. Edwards of CallingMuslims.org. Thank you very much. To our viewers all over the world, you can watch us by satellite through the following frequencies. For North America and Canada, please join us on the Galaxy 19 satellite. Frequency 11966 horizontal. For Europe and Middle East, join us on the Hotbird satellite. Frequency 12111 vertical. For Australia and New Zealand, please join us on the Optus 2 satellite. Frequency 12546 vertical. For more information, please call the number on your screen or visit us at trinitychannel.com. You can now watch ABN in the Trinity Channel on your iPhone and iPad. Search for ABN Sat in the App Store. You can watch all the following channels. The Arabic Channel, the English Trinity Channel, the Worship Channel, the Surath Channel, the Kurdish Channel, the al Qadus Channel, the Prayer Channel, and a special channel for Europe and the Middle East. For more information, please call the number on your screen or visit us at trinitychannel.com. To all our viewers, you can now watch our shows on the following platforms, such as Android tablets, Android boxes, Android phones, a Chromecast stick, your smart TV, or a Roku stick. For more information, please call the number on your screen or visit us at trinitychannel.com. ABN viewers. To watch free reruns of our marathon shows, apologetic shows, and English programs, go to www.youtube.com and type Trinity Channel. Here at ABN, we make it easier for viewers like you to watch programs. For more information, call us at 248-416-1300. Yes, welcome back to the Trinity Channel. I am C.L. Edwards from CallingMuslims.org, and you are viewing a terrific show today. We are talking about Ramadan, and we're talking about some of the jihadi terror incidents that have occurred over this past Ramadan month. If you didn't know, if you're not Muslim, if you don't know about these things, we are in the Islamic month of Ramadan, and it has been a very bloody month. Now that's not Islamophobia, that's just me stating a fact. And if I'm not allowed as a Christian to state a fact, then we have a, we have a real problem. Um, I'm not the one who's being the bigot, you're the one that's being the bigot. And I have the right to say that you're being bigoted towards me. And I have the right to stand up for myself. Um, now, we are expecting some guests to come in. They haven't quite arrived, but very soon we will have in-studio guests Dave Ajimi and uh, Adib Yaksil. And uh, Adib is a Muslim of Turkish descent, and we are hoping that he'll be in. But we do have uh, Dave Ajimi, who will be in the studio here with us to continue this discussion. Now, for the last half an hour or so, we've been uh, talking with Christian Prince, um, a Christian apologist extraordinaire, uh, author, a speaker, and a uh, all-around scholar of 
Christianity and Islam. Um, Christian Prince, are you still there? Yeah, I actually, I, I'm worried that our uh, our Muslim guest will not show up uh, yeah, because you scared him. He, he was he was looking at the uh, at the live stream and uh, maybe you said something that was very offensive. I don't know. Uh, no, no, no. I fault. don't think. It's not my I don't fault. think what I said. I think he did search about me because this is what Muslims do. If you remember ABN before, they offer Shabir Ali a debate with me and then he accept and then he send an email to to ABN saying to them he is busy right now doing PhD and since then he is doing PhD and he never finished <laughs> you know this is the case of all Muslims so I hope that I'm wrong and he will show up I hope he's listening because it's not nice to promise us to be here and I understand you are Muslim Quran only and suppose that will make it more difficult on me don't worry you will be supported by Allah and his prophet you will win and we are not debating anyway we are going to have a nice conversation and we will see what the month of Ramadan is about so well, I encourage the Muslims not to fear, like, you know, if you have God in your side, who could be against you? Yes. Right? Yes. So don't fear anyone. If Allah is a true God, for sure you will win. Now, for me, in my case, I have no fear because I believe strongly in my Lord, and I believe strongly if Lord is with me, who could be against me? Amen. So be with us and show us, uh, and at the same, same time, uh, I encourage the Muslims to be real, you know? I mean... Stop being hypocrite trying to sell out Islam to the West. I want to see a real Muslim who want to say things as it is. But it's hard to find some Muslim who will say things as it is to you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, the, well as, um, as it was reported in the Hadith, uh, Muhammad himself said that war is deception. And um, from the uh, jihadi, from the Mujahideen standpoint, they are at, they are at war with Christians and non-Muslims in the Kufar. So it's, uh, it's, there's a different motivation and a different tactic. Now, I, I said earlier that we were going to have Dave Ajami live in the studio. I guess that has been changed. We do have Dave Ajami, but he is with us live via Skype. Now, do we have a connection with uh, Mr. Ajami? I'm here. I got you loud and clear, and it's Ajima, but I got Ajima. you. Ajima. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No problem. <laughs> Charge it to my head, not my heart. Here you go. Uh, there you go. And now we have been discussing um, Ramadan. We've been discussing um, what's been going on for the previous month. I read <laughs> off headlines from the previous week of all types of incidents that have taken place. Uh, people who are claiming that they are Mujahideen, that they are fighting in the name of Islam, and they have attacked people. Recently, we just saw a very grave tragedy that took place in um, Turkey, and our prayers are with the victims and those who are injured and those who are having to deal with that. We don't wish death or destruction upon anyone. Uh, our prayers are for them, but there, a recent ISIS-related attack, according to government, government officials, they're saying that this most likely took place or was orchestrated by ISIS in Istanbul. Um, can you give us your standpoint, your reaction, to this recent attack and the whole idea of Islamic Jihad in principle. Who are you asking that to? I'm asking it to you. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, well, first of all, I'm surprised that Turkey, Turkey is basically buying uh, oil from ISIS in the background and uh, supporting ISIS for Jihad by doing that. Hmm. Uh, but I think they just got a wake-up call that ISIS is uh, tax anybody they want to attack. But I think it's important for people out there that are listening in the United States to know what Ramadan really is. And that's really supposed to be the Holy of Holies, if you will, where they get together and they uh, basically fast from uh, sunrise to sunset. But just before sunset, they usually get up early in the morning, eat a big uh, breakfast, and then they, don't, they abstain from drinking, eating, smoking, and sex between dawn and sunset. Okay. And then after sunset, then they go ahead and eat and feast again. So it's not really a fast like we think of that Jesus went through when he was in the, uh, in the desert. Uh, and another thing I think people need to know is during Ramadan, uh, for example, there's hundreds of thousands of sheep that are sent to Saudi Arabia during Ramadan uh, for slaughter uh, from both New Zealand and Australia. And that what they slaughter, they kill, it's not an atonement for their sin. Like we believe as Christians that Jesus died once and for all, and all those 
uh, Old Testament ideas of slaughtering an animal and putting your hand on their head. It was just a, an image of what Christ was going to be in the future. So uh, we don't believe as Christians anymore that you have to slaughter any animal because it just pointed to Jesus Christ as the ultimate sacrifice for our sin. But when they do kill all those animals, they're supposed to give one-third they eat, one-third they uh, give to friends, and one-third they're supposed to donate to the poor. Well, obviously, when you slaughter that many animals, hundreds of thousands of them, the meat rots, and it really doesn't go to the poor. But uh, during Ramadan also, uh, they're supposed to consider giving money to, for like a tithe, what the Christian would give, an alm, if you will. And that's 2.5% of their, their income. However, 7.5% uh, of the 2.5% goes to jihad. Mm -hmm. And if they are in war which they, they would say they are with the infidels at the present time, all of the 2.5% can go to jihad. I think people have to understand uh, that looking into the future that they're really taking money for jihad. And the other thing I think you have to understand that the worst times possible for terrorism is going to be the last 10 days of Ramadan because that's the point where they all sit down and they pray to their God, and they're hoping for an encounter with the same angel that Muhammad had, supposedly. Uh, and if they get that encounter, they know they're going to heaven. If they don't get that encounter, uh, then they're not sure they're going to go to heaven because uh, they're only, their way of going to heaven is only two ways. One, they have to earn their way. They must say there's no God but Allah. They have to pray five times a day. They have to give alms, like I just said. They have to fast during Ramadan. They have to make a pilgrimage to Mecca. Or they have to do jihad. Now, when they're waiting for this angel to speak to them in that last 10 days and they don't get that answer, that's when they're going to say, well, I guess uh, I'm not going to go to heaven or I'm not sure if Allah's not in a good mood. I guess the best thing I can do is do jihad because then I'm sure I'm going to go to heaven. And I would like to say to the Christians out there, that's probably the best time that Christians need to be on their knees and praying for the Muslims because they're open to visions and dreams. Unfortunately, they're not going to get the visions and dreams from uh, their God, their, their anticipated God. We hope that they get a vision or dream from Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Now, we do have a Skype connection with our third guest who is with us today, uh, Mr. Edip. Uxel, I don't know if I pronounced your name correctly, but you can come on and correct me if I'm wrong. Are you there, Edip? Yeah, I am there. I'm trying to record it, too. I don't know whether the quality of recording would be better than yours. Okay. Hi, uh, the gentleman who is talking, I didn't get his name. My name is Edip, E-D-I-P, last name Yuxel, Y-U-X-Y-U-K-S-E-L. It means author Excel, Edip Yuxel. Okay. okay. Uh, and the gentleman's name? Uh, that would be Dave Edema. Um, I, I wish that you put his name there anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, we also have another guest on here, uh, Christian Prince. Okay, Christine. And um, I didn't get his name again. I don't know how. Can you spell it for me? Dave, as like the, uh, like the prophet David? Dave. Dave. Oh, okay. Dave. Okay. Hi, Dave. Um, let me start with this. Today's Sunnis and Shiites are the number one enemy, enemies of Prophet Muhammad and his message, and also the enemies, of course, of Jesus and Moses, their message. Their message was monotheism, their message was peace and justice, and also rejecting the traditions, superstitions of their ancestors. Now, as today's Christians has nothing to do with Jesus, like the Christians who bombed Iraq, killed one million people, hundreds of thousands of children and women killed by those, they are not Christians, or those killed who showered bombs, Nepal bombs on Vietnam, they are not Christians. Or Moses has nothing to do with those Jews who went uh, two years ago to Gaza and killed 2,000 people claiming that there were peanut size rockets coming and killed no one, no one except two soldiers where they were killing the Palestinians and 500 children they killed. They have nothing to do with Moses. Or the Christians who burned witches, 
they have nothing to do with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Or Christians who, who burned Tyndall, the first translator of the Bible, they have nothing to do with uh, the same with Jesus. So, or so those what, who are what making, I'm getting from you let is... Let me uh, finish, let me finish. Or okay, those okay. who are making billions of dollars, billions of dollars from military weapons, production of it, and selling around the world and creating wars in order to sell more. Mm -hmm. They have nothing to do with... There are tens of millions of people in the United States alone making big money out of these weapons that these terrorists are using. Okay. However, when I look at the word terror, what is the terror? Like, in just last 20 years or 15 years or last century, Christians killed 666 times more than Muslims killed. Just look at the two world war, Christian wars, just recent wars, Christ, Christians. Now, but, now, so can I, I, therefore, let me ask no. you a question, because you've, you've, you've said a lot of things. Let me ask you a question. Now, you just said that mo Christians killed more than Muslims. Um, over the last 100 years, but at the same time, you said that those people who did those bombings in Iraq and those people who, who did bombings in uh, uh, Vietnam and different places, they weren't Christians. So I, I'm confused at that point. Could you clarify? Uh, you're saying that Christians have killed more people over the last 100 years, but in the beginning of your, your monologue, you said that those people the were newborn, not Christians. The, the newborn Christian president of the United States, which supported... The newborn, do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. The newborn Christian pres president of the United States, Bush, and his Christian supporters who prayed for him, voted for him. Mm -hmm. he, he made Muslims up lies. voted for him too. He invaded Iraq. He killed one million Iraqis, according to Doctors Without Borders. A question for you Christians. Did you condemn them at, as one of the biggest terror acts in history? Mm -hmm. Did you condemn? Or did you condemn two years ago? when 500 children, Palestinian kids, were killed by Nazis, by Nazi sympathizers. Just so, so, what I, so what I'm getting from you is that you... Them dead. I am asking you the honesty, honesty. I'm an honest person. Uh -huh. I receive death threats from ISIS because I tell the truth to Muslims. So, but, I but, tell the truth to Christians too, but uh -huh. you don't have the courage, the honesty to criticize your crimes. Okay, I don't have any crimes. But let there me ask you... Um, you said that, uh, so what I'm getting from you from what you said is obviously you do not consider ISIS or ISIS supporters or ISIS sympathizers or the people who are claiming to be Mujahideen who have done uh, over 12 terrorist acts this past week. You do not, you, uh, it would be safe to say that you do not consider them to be real Muslims. Oh, like you are not a Christian either. You are, you are, you are Christian. You are not following Jesus either, because Jesus. I'm not following spiritual. Jesus. Are you? Are you no, you are not. You are, How do you know you I'm not are, following you are, Jesus? You are take like your ancestors were, my because ancestors? you are following the teaching of Saint Paul, who is a hypocrite. Well, actually, my Christian ancestors were African, and they were enslaved by Muslims. What did you say? My ancestors were Africans, and and they were enslaved by Muslims. Okay, let me tell you. Here is slavery in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, there are numerous verses. But, just I, uh, but did you just hear what I just no, said? No, uh, sir, sir, paper. did you just hear what I said? You said that I wasn't a real Christian and I'm, I'm an African-American. My ancestors were brought over here on the transatlantic slave trade. Um, Europeans purchased them from Muslims who established um, is, uh, slave the, auctions Islam. in Africa, Islam along, Islam along the coast of Africa. Slavery. Those Christians, they have nothing to do with Jesus who are slave owners, okay. and those Muslims who are slave owners, they have nothing to do with Islam. Mohammed because owned slaves? Islam, excuse me. Mohammed owned slaves? No. No? No, Cannot Mohammed did not own slaves. Big lie. Right. Okay. He freed a slave. Oh, okay. He, he freed what? a slave. Okay, okay. How do you know if he, so he, where in the Quran does it say that he freed a slave? Okay, now do you want me to talk a little bit about slavery? Can I, can now I want I, you to answer my questions. Okay, here is the the Quran says slavery is the biggest sin, is the unforgivable sin. Okay. Because slavery is shirk, polytheism. If okay. someone enslaves another human, becomes his lord. Okay. It is in Arabic. It is Rabb. Lord, have mercy. In no Arabic, can who I, knows Arabic here? Abd means the slave. Okay. A person cannot be the abd of another other than God. If another a person claims someone to be his abd, means his slave, he becomes like Pharaoh. 
Pharaoh was Pharaoh. He was uh, arrogant. He he was the worst people because he enslaved people. He claimed that he is the lord of other people. Okay, That's I get you. I get you. I get you. Slavery, thank you. Thank slavery you. contradicts the mm -hmm. most important principle of the Quran, Islam, okay. which is the the peacemaking, okay. which is the system of all messengers, prophets of God. Thank you very that, much for that answer. Now I, I did ans ask where you said you said Muhammad didn't own slaves. And I asked where, Mo, where it does it say in the Quran, Mohammed didn't own slaves, but um, Christian Prince, we, yes. let's get some of our other guests into this conversation. Finally. We don't want to just put it on one person. Finally. Christian Prince, what do you All think right. of uh, what you just heard? Finally, finally, you put me on air. I am muted. I'm trying to share. <laughs> and this guy is rambling all over. First of all, you are changing the topic, and which is a sign of hypocrisy. Number two, you Muslims, you remember America that attack in Iraq, when the Iraqi, they came and kissed the shoes of George Bush to go. And you Muslims are the one who paid for the cost of the war. The Gulf War number one and the Gulf War number two. You Muslims are the one who ask America to involve in Al-Bosnia and you kiss the shoes of America to protect the Muslims in Al-Bosnia. You Muslims are the one who's asking the America right now to stay in Iraq. After Obama, he asked to withdraw. You are Muslims are the one who asking America to stay in Turkey, your country, and you are the one who is giving them a base to stay in your country, and yet you hate America. You Muslims are a bunch of hypocrites, and you have no dignity. Number two, you are a person who says that you Christians, you kill more. According to Christianity, we kill only to defend ourselves. The one who die by the sword, the one who kill by the sword, by the sword will be killed. You Muslims are the one who attack us for 600 years, we have no crusade, no crusade whatsoever. The crusade started after you Muslims attacked us, not before. For 600 years, we never heard of crusade. Enter you Muslims, and your Turkey, actually the one you are living in, it is an occupation on our land. This is our land, and you speak about, mm. about killing and attacking and taking the land of others. This is the Constantinia. This is a Christian land. You invaded your Turkish. Number two. You said Islam is against slavery. In front of everybody is watching us, I challenge you to show me the verse in the Quran that says that slavery is a sin. Just to show everyone that you are making th things up. Number three, you said Muhammad, he never owned a slave. I saw your translation of the Quran. Now let me tell you about those who uh, follow Khalifa. They found the Hadith exposing Muhammad, so they said to themselves, we are going to reject the hadith because hadith is exposing our prophet who is nothing but a child molester, who is a criminal, who is a thief, who is a killer, who even spy at his own son wife when she was almost naked. And he forced his son to, to divorce her so he can have her. They rejected all the hadith. But now the Quran became a problem still because a lot of stories in the Quran is very offensive. So what they come with is a new solution. Let us change the meaning of the Quran. So this guy, he come with a new interpretation of the Quran and a new translation which fit with whatsoever with nothing. And he just said, we heard him, that the Shia and the Sunni are the enemies of Islam. He did say that. Who is left? How many like you in the world who believe in what you believe? 1,500? So according to you right now, all the Muslims are nothing and they are not Muslims. You are the only one Muslim left in this earth. So who, is, who care for you? Who count? You, count? you count for no one. You don't count for the Muslims. You don't count for anyone. Nobody accept your theories and your lies because simply you cannot support it. And now, let us go for academic talk. You said that we, you know, the, the topic today is the month of Ramadan. And until now, you said nothing about Ramadan. Now, I challenge you, you as a Quranic person only, who don't follow anything except the Quran to tell me where in the Quran it says you have to fast the month of Ramadan as 30 days from the sunset to the sunrise and you don't eat, you don't drink, you don't etc. Can you show me? You cannot. So you are talking about fasting but you do not know where to get fasting from. Can you show me a proof and I would like the, the host to give you the, the mic back. I want to see from the Quran, Mr. Quran only, show me where in the Quran it says to you how to fast when to fast and where to fast, which means the timing, the, the, the location, uh, how to do it, uh, how to stop, when to stop, when to start. Can you show me? Oh, that was, uh, Gentlemen, uh, yes, you started uh, Mr. Adib, you're me. back. 
you accuse me of hypocrisy you exactly you did you made up many lies against prophet muhammad against the quran mm. you put them just like bullets boom 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 all the lies all the distortions mm. and then you end up about fasting you want me to talk about fasting no i will not talk about that it is not an issue don't fast not important but sure. the, the title of the show is ramadan you know, i am going to expose your hypocrisy and your lies here it is you said in the quran you don't have a verse correct about the slavery against slavery okay let that me give you the first yes. numbers 379 a prophet cannot have a, cannot make people servant to him 379 chapter 3 verse 79 chapter 4 3 25 92 chapter 5 verse 89 chapter 8 verse 67 chapter 24 verse, verse 32 33 hold on hold on hold on verse three, you, you're spitting out verses and no one uh, the audience can't hear what you're saying so hold that on hold on says, the disbelievers the ingrates cannot you do not free slaves can you put me on okay okay so okay we got your answer we didn't understand half of the verses so you me, said this, but we didn't got me, your answer, answer so uh christian prince not the yes, yes. Jesus. listen 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 Can we this mute, guy uh, this guy this guy he have no dignity whatsoever okay. listen carefully he Can quote for us quran chapter 3 okay. verse number 79 obviously he don't speak arabic he do not know what arabic is about this one it says those who say ma kana li basharin an yu'tihu Allah al-kitab wal hukm wal nubuwwa thumma yaqul lan nas kunu ibadan li it's it is not for a prophet to say be my slaves and worship me this is not about owning slaves you are a very funny muslim <laughs> read it carefully it says and even in your translation it says that you see how hypocrite you are don't be a servant slave to me to worship me. Okay. Don't be a bad listen, 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 listen. Ibad, the word Ibad in Arabic, it's mean worshiping. Not no. it's not it's coming from slaves, yes, but to be my servant worshipper, not to be my slave. And to show you that you are making things up, all the list of the verses you mentioned have nothing to do with what we are talking about. If we go right now to the Quran and we search for Wama Malakat Aymanakum, now I know you will say to us that Malakat Aymanakum does not mean uh, own a slave. The Quran says in different verses, if you could not fast, you have to free a slave. So, how you can free a slave if you don't own a slave? That would be very funny and very naive of you to say. Okay. Malakat Aymanakum, yes, listen, just yes, wait, yes. just wait, just wait. It says in the Quran, it's forbidden for you to have sexual relationship with married women, except those who you own, except those who you own, which means even they are married, you can have sex with them. I heard you speaking last week with Jay Smith. You said those are women, you have a contract with them. What do you mean contract? Are you saying in Islam, you can have a contract with married women? Can you have sex with her? Can't wreck. What are you saying in Islam? You can have a contract with married women right. and she is married and you have sex with her based on a contract? Mm -hmm. That that would be the most dummy, funny, funny answer ever I heard in my life. The Quran is so clear, all the Muslims can ro go and read all interpretation around the earth by Muslims, not by, not by Christians. It says it clearly, forbidding for you, the word muhassanat, obviously you don't speak Arabic. By the way, you claim that you speak Arabic but better than Arab. I challenge you to read for me the verse you just quote for me in Arabic. Just to show everybody that you do not know Arabic and yet you claim that you are translating the Quran. How I'm someone Arab. cannot I'm read Arab. Arabic I can teach you Arabic. Arabic, he translates the Quran. That is impossible. Okay, so let's just, let's get a reaction, uh, especially, um, we don't want to be all over the place, we want to keep it uh, a little uh, restrained. You cited verse uh, Surah 379, you said that would be a Surah. And a, uh, an ayat that would say that the Quran forbids slavery. But uh, we just heard the response of Christian Prince. Um, what, is, what, what is your uh, reply to that uh, on, regarding uh, Surah 379? How exactly does that forbid slavery? Is it my turn? Yes. I'm speaking okay. to you. Uh, first answer, how uh, he asked the question. First of all, he's very abusive. And uh, if he continues these abusive insults, I am what? going to leave these uh, things. Well, we don't want you to me. leave, but you have been a, kind of abusive also. Cut me too. I'm not cutting him. Now, two of you are cutting me. That's not the right way. 
If you, I invite you, I will treat you equally. I will give you words and I will not cut you okay. before that person. I will give you equal length. Uh, here is gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, how a person who is fasting uh, can uh, be asked to free a slave. Here it is. The slaves of other people, they were Christians and Jews and pagans. Muslim had contract, uh, had agreements with them, peace agreements. They could not force them to free the slaves, but Muslims were buying slaves and buying their freedom. Mm. That's exactly this is it. And here it is. Let me answer. Let me answer. I give you in this book, I have all the verse numbers mm -hmm. here. I know that you will make noise and it will go to, it will not go anywhere. But I ask the readers, go ch uh, channel 19.org website over there. This is a PDF free available. Go check it. I give you okay. all the things. In fact, slavery came from Christianity, from Judaism, uh, from Judaism stoning to death, borrowed from you, has nothing to do with Quran, or killing apostate again for you. I have list of verses from the mm. Old and New Testament. And okay. it is a shame that you are, you are like Sunnis that you are criticizing. You are no different. When you have power, you will be like them. And you were in the past. The reason you don't do right now, you have a proxy killers for you. Proxy killers are the governments. All right, all right. Okay, Listen, thank you. Okay, thank you very please. much. But we do have a caller. We do have a caller who has been sitting on hold for a very long time, and we don't want to make our callers sit on hold. We like having callers. We like having dialogue with the audience. So we have a caller, Edmund, who would like to uh, maybe ask one of you a question. Do we have Edmund on the line? Do we have Edmund on the line? Nope, he's gone. Sorry about that. Unfortunately, we couldn't get to you, Edmund. Uh, as you can see, we're having a very lively dialogue. Um, but Edib, uh, he says he has all the answers in his book. Um, Let me answer, please. Yes, uh, go, go ahead, Christian Pritz. Yes, listen, the floor. I want this guy, he claimed to speak Arabic, to read for us a chapter 2, verse 170, 178. To show everybody that you do not know Arabic, you have nothing to do with Arabic, and you can try your best to read it for us. And you will see the answer of all the claims you said. And by the way, you are saying we are the one attacked you. When, when the host gave you the microphone, you called us killers. You called us thieves. You called us corrupt. You called us criminals. You called us all kinds of names. And when we respond to you, you cry. And you are going to close the door and leave like a child. That is not an act of an adult. Be a man and stay there and answer me. And let Allah be with you. He will help you. In chapter 2, verse 178, it says... All those who you believe, you can read your translation, by the way. Huh? Read your translation. Come let with your me, fabrication. Let me read the Arabic. Prove you sure, go ahead. Go ahead. That you are making up all the time. Even right now, all in right. front of me, you made up a lie about me. Go ahead. Ya ayuha alladhina amanu kutiba alaykum al qisasu fil qatla al hurru bil hurri wal abdu bil abdi wal unsa bil unsa. Stop. 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 Yes. Stop. 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 Listen. What what al abd bil abd wal hurr bil hurr mean? Uh, the free with the free, the slave with the slave. Thank you but very it's much. It's not your slave. It's Listen carefully. Okay, 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 guys. Murder. One person at a time. We gotta have one person at a time. One person at a time. If a Muslim he kill a free man, the free man will be killed. In the case of a slave, if a Muslim he kill a slave, his slave will be killed. This is the madness of this religion. They got the law of Moses wrong. Eye for an eye, it doesn't work this way. So in this case here, it says, if a free man kill a free man, a free man will be killed. But if a free man kill a slave, his slave will be killed. So how you say to us, Islam is against slavery and Islam making a rule differentiate between a free and slave even in the case of murder. So if a free man kill a slave, a free man will not be killed for killing a slave. Instead, we will kill his slave for it is eye for an eye. So you kill my slave, I kill your slave. And this is showing us how clear the lie you came with saying that in Islam we are against slavery. Now, you know what? Everybody can go and read all translation of this verse by anyone they choose. And they will see how come you Khalifa followers, you come with all your false fiction. And you are the one who said the word there is Abd. And you are the one who translates saying slave for a slave. Thank you very much. Now, listen yeah. carefully. Today we are Manchester talking the whole point. Okay. The okay. whole point. The whole point. Okay. The whole no, point. Uh, Christian Pritz, can I just uh, uh, interrupt you one quick second? We have to go to a break. 
for one moment and we can come back and we can uh, get some answers and we can ask some more questions and have some more dialogue. And in fact, we can, we can ask uh, Dave, who's been patiently sitting there quietly, his, his take on what's been going on so far. But we're going to take a break real quick and we're going to come back. So don't change the channel. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Trinity Channel. To our viewers all over the world, you can watch us by satellite through the following frequencies. For North America and Canada, please join us on the Galaxy 19 satellite, frequency 11966 horizontal. For Europe and Middle East, join us on the Hotbird satellite, frequency 12111 vertical. For Australia and New Zealand, please join us on the Optus 2 satellite, frequency 12546 vertical. For more information, please call the number on your screen or visit us at trinitychannel.com. You can now watch ABN in the Trinity Channel on your iPhone and iPad. Search for ABN Sat in the App Store. You can watch all the following channels. The Arabic Channel, the English Trinity Channel, the Worship Channel, the Surath Channel, the Kurdish Channel, the al Qadus Channel, the Prayer Channel, and a special channel for Europe and the Middle East. For more information, please call the number on your screen or visit us at trinitychannel.com. To all our viewers, you can now watch our shows on the following platforms, such as Android tablets, Android boxes, Android phones, a Chromecast stick, your smart TV, or a Roku stick. For more information, please call the number on your screen or visit us at trinitychannel.com. ABN viewers, to watch free reruns of our marathon shows, apologetic shows, and English programs, go to www.youtube.com and type Trinity Channel. Here at ABN, we make it easier for viewers like you to watch programs. For more information, call us at 248-416-1300. And yes, this is C.L. Edwards, and we are back again. You're viewing the Trinity Channel, C.L. Edwards of CallingMuslims.org, and we have a very lively conversation going on today. We have several guests with us, Dave Ajima, we have Edip Yuxel, a Muslim of Turkish descent, we have Christian Prince, and we're, the show topic today is Ramadan and human blood sacrifices during Ramadan. Now before we get back into our conversation, we do have a caller, and we do want to make priority for our callers. So do we have the caller online now? Yes, yes caller. Yes, I am on the line. Yes, caller, you may speak and ask your question or make your statement. Yeah, this is Edmund. Yes, Edmund, how are you doing? Good, good, good. My question to the uh, Muslim uh, follow me, you know, is uh, uh, this is Ramadan now. And Muhammad, he killed Asma bin Ra uh, Marwan. She had three kids. He killed her in Ramadan. He killed another lady. They call her Ummu Urfa. She Ramadan, in Ramadan, he killed her. He he got Sophia. He killed all his village, plus her parents, and he got sex with her same night. He got married from Zainab bin Jahsh. Uh, 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 I, I think he's uh, his son wife. And and I I want to know he's a pro and he got married from Aisha. Is nine years old. I want to know he's a prophet. Or he's a double. Okay, and in the Quran, and in the Quran, they, they say, "Ayuhan Nabi, harid al mu'minin ala al qital." He understand what that mean. And the ayat tani, they say in the Quran, "Wa'adu lahum mustata'atum min kuwa wa ribat al khair turhubuna adu Allah wa adu." Turhubun, that mean it's a violence, it's a terrorist. Okay. I okay. want to know, he's a, he's a prophet or he's a devil? And thank you. Uh, thank you very much for calling in. Now, I, I, I think I know what uh, Edip's answer is going to be since he rejects the, uh, the Sunnah. 
and the Sunni position, but let's hear it directly from him. Adib, did you get to hear the caller's statement in question? Yeah. First of all, the verse about, uh, do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Uh, uh, the verse uh, about fasting, it again, that distorted. Uh, uh, it was a multicultural, multinational, uh, uh, democratically elected leader, Muhammad, was in Medina, and Jews and Christians and pagans, like believers, they were free in their affairs. They were following their own system. Therefore, they had uh, slaves, and therefore Muslims were supposed to go free the slaves. That is, and interestingly, you have verses over verses about promoting slavery in the Bible, and uh, here no, is But the Peter. question wasn't about the Bible. The question wasn't about the Bible. Uh, but thank you for your answer, though. Parent, fear of God, submit yourself to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, okay. but also who are okay, harsh. Okay. All right, that, uh, thank you very much. But uh, let's, uh, let's hear from Dave, Dave Ejima. He's been, he's been quiet for a, a long time. Uh, you've gotten to hear the dialogue. You've gotten to hear our Muslim guest who has been here. Uh, what say you to all of, all of this that's been going on? Well, the Bible says where there are many words, there is sin. And I heard a lot of that coming from the Muslim here from Turkey. But let's get to the heart of the matter. We're talking about Ramadan. So what is this time? This was the time Muhammad went from Mecca to Medina. It was the time Muhammad had his enlightenment in the cave. It was the time, the, the actual time that Muhammad thought about killing himself three times, but his wife said, don't do that because you're really hearing from God. And in the olden days, they were supposed to stop war between each other during Ramadan, but that didn't work very well because they kept fighting. Hmm. So uh, basically, that is a little bit of historical background. Yes. And what is going on now? June 14, 2016, in France, a 32-year-old Muslim stabs a girl because during Ramadan as a basically a sacrifice, of something he thinks he should do. Uh, jihadists have left Syria for Europe to shed blood. A Somalian immigrant shot by a SWAT team in Texas at a Walmart. So far, 532 people killed during Ramadan. Turkish airport has uh, just been bombed. And the Turks are buying oil from ISIS, which is funding the very thing that's bombing them. So the link between Ramadan and extreme violence in Islam has occurred in antiquity. And it just, uh, when Muslims complain about violence, for example, to Muhammad, about fighting during Ramadan, Muhammad had a new revelation in 2.217 which states, it was those committing the attacks that were the true victims, because non-Muslims, by their sheer presence, were denying Muslims the ability to follow their religion. Now, how ridiculous is that? Mm -hmm. Others, for example, killing homosexuals was not a great sin, because such temptation was a far greater sin. The Quran 3, 110, Muslims must do right and forbid evil, and since we're not Muslims, we're evil, I guess it's okay to kill us. And what did the U.S. government just do? It warns citizens of increased attacks during Ramadan. Abu Muhammad al-Adani said, Jihadists, get prepared. Be ready to make it a month of calamity everywhere for non-Muslims. So we're an equivalent of a blood sacrifice during Ramadan for these radicals. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say one more thing, yes. that he's exactly wrong. Uh, Islam has been the ki biggest killing machine in the history of the world. They don't even have accurate numbers total accurate numbers, but somewhere between 270 million and 560 million people had been killed by Islam. And what was their sin? They weren't believers in Islam, therefore they died. And as far as slave, that's a whole different issue. Then I have to ask them, what are the Hemis? What's the Jiza? I, you can go into this, this man's way off base. Yes, truly tragic, but we do have a caller. And like I said, we do want to give priority to callers. Now, do we have our, our second caller of the night up on? Three, online. three, four people. Do we have another caller? Or against one. Uh, uh, I guess we don't have our caller up yet. Hello. Uh, yes. uh, we do have our caller. Are you there? One, two, yes, I'm here. Four. What is your name? My name is Kishore. Kishore. Uh, what is your question or comment tonight? Uh, my comment is uh, the other person is still uh, talking. I don't know. Uh, no, <laughs> you're free to talk. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Christian Prince, your rock, the way you are researching the things, and and it is uh, really great you are analyzing the things and all. The person, other the Muslim person who is doing this, 
he is not able to pull the a single word from the Quran regarding the Ramadan. Could you do? Could you explain where is the Ramadan thing? What Christian Prince asks? Okay, so you're asking what Christian Prince asked maybe ten or fifteen minutes ago about um, where in the Quran can we find the fiqh, uh, so to speak, for Ramadan? How do we know when to fast? How long to fast? What fasting involves? When and all the questions regarding fasting. Um, Edib, do you want to answer that question about where do we find uh, the, the uh, methodology of fasting in the Quran? Boy, you are good in playing your game. You are <laughs> no four game, people. No Listen, no four game. people, Hands four up, people, no one, two, three, and the other, four people, and then you threw all the lies and insults uh, using all Sunni fabrications mm -hmm. freely. And then you want me to talk about Ramazan. No, you insulted Prophet Muhammad. You said he killed many crazy people. It is the biggest lie. It is, look at this, Ibn is, uh, here it is. It is in how many hundred years later, 145 leaders in Ibn Ishaq. He died 151 years after Prophet Muhammad. He came up with the story of Bani Kreza massacre, which is supposedly hundreds of Jewish people were massacred. This doesn't exist in the Quran. If there was an event like this, Quran refers to many events. But the studies shows, I have a journal article on 19.org, just research the home page, the first page, Kreza Q, and then you will find out this is an old mythology story, Jewish story to the numbers and details, and they are exactly using the same old story, the pre-Islamic story, not, not pre-Islamic, pre-Muhammad story, and then accusing Muhammad of doing this. Mm. And then this gentleman, you say, killed his wives and son. These are big lies, but okay. what you do? You pick and choose among those books. According to those books, Muhammad split the money to half, half of it fell to Ali's backyard. These kind of silly, stupid books but it is in your interest in order to project okay. your own crimes. I hear you, you. Project but your we didn't, own we, crimes. But, but Christians didn't invent those stories. Those stories are in Islamic history it's not books. Islamic. They're in are Islamic enemies of Hadith Muhammad, books. As you are the enemy of Jesus, because you fabricate many lies against Jesus. Jesus never claimed to be Lord God. Jesus That's never it. promoted slavery. But uh -huh. St. Paul promoted slavery. Jesus never ask for money for t teaching, preaching, but you do. You make religion as your business. Okay. Jesus never supported this, uh, warmongers, but uh, you support warmongers. Okay, support okay, okay, okay. We yeah. will let, uh, Christian Prince, I'll let you answer that. Yeah, just we one have, second. you just know, one obviously, second. obviously. One second, Christian Prince, just one second. Um, we're coming to the end of our time with Dave and Edib. Unfortunately, they're gonna have to uh, go, but well, Christian Prince is going to remain and we're going to ask, uh, we're going to let Christian Prince reply to some of the, the last things that Adib just, uh, just said, that um, the things that are in the Hadith are fabrications, that we shouldn't be bringing them up. Uh, another curious thing he said, I don't, I don't know if you heard Christian Prince, he said that uh, Muhammad was a democratically elected, elect, elected leader of Medina. That was very interesting. I've never heard that before. Um, yeah. So let's nope. say goodbye to our, our guests. We are glad you guys were on here. God bless you. God bless both of you. Um, uh, may the light of Christ be upon both of you. Uh, and we are glad for your input and your knowledge and your wisdom. Um, for in, in a few minutes, we're going to have you guys uh, go off yet. But Christian Prince. Yes. Uh, yes, you know, sir. Listen carefully for what this gentleman said. We okay. keep asking him, can you show us where we can find the Quran, the rules of, of, of the of the Ramadan, he cannot find it, he cannot bring it to us. And I, 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 I'm really upset that he is leaving because that is showing us that he's trying to run away from answering. Until now, the whole uh, program is about Ramadan, but yet he did not answer us. He's a Quran only guy. When I gave him a verse from the Quran, he said uh, uh, about the slave for the slave and, uh, and women for women and etc. and the free for free, he said, at that time, there was a Jewish in the city there, and this is multicultural, and Muhammad was elected. Where do you get this from? <laughs> is that from the history books or from the Quran? The Quran never says such a thing. So he is a fabricator. He does not know how to answer. Let me show you how hypocrite he is. I hope he will call back, and he will be a man, and he will call, and he will continue. You can make it. Come on, call back, 
and stay in the program. I want you to stay. Look, I gave him verse number two, chapter number two, verse 178. He said, this is not for the, 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 the Muslims. This is the, the, he was elected leader and he was judging between the Jews and the Christians. What a big fat lie what you came with. The first thing in the Quran, the verse, it says, Ya ayyuhal amanu, all those who you believe. You've been, you've, been, you've been forced to follow this. This is a law for the Muslims, not for the Christians and the Jews. I thought the Christians and the Jews are kuffar. They are misleaded. They are deceived. And you keep saying that to us. But the verse saying it clearly, Oh, who you believe. Oh, who you believe. Are you deaf? Are you blind? What's wrong with you? The verse stated clearly that this is an order for the Muslims. Number two. When you speak about that we Muslims, uh, uh, we have a lot of fabrication in our books. Is that an insult to us or to you? How we can trust that you are not just another fabricator as all the Muslims before you? Listen carefully, Christians, what this guy is saying. All Muslim books and the history of Islam is a fabrication. Mm. This is what he's saying. Now he make a new book and that will make him simply he is the one to be trusted as you are saying to us we have one billion ant all of them they are a bunch of liars and i am the only ant is truthful that will be the the joke of the year additional to that where you get your resource from if we go to the quran just to show everybody i i am i'm happy that uh, uh, brother dave he have patient i i hope i'm not uh, 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 because i know he like to share with us you know if you go in the quran chapter 19 verse number 26 this is a chapter of Mary or Maryam. You will see the Quran is speaking about fasting from talking. Fasting from talking. Mm. Where in the Quran is speaking about fasting from eating? Which means yeah. if this guy do not go by anything except the Quran. How I, I would have loved him. I would, out of, I would have loved for him to give an answer to that, but he didn't. He wanted to attack Christians and and I and I hope he doesn't accuse us of insulting and attacking him. Because in reality, he began his talk with insulting Christians and insulting me directly. Um, but we do still have Dave here. We still have Dave Edgema here. Um, and before he, we, he leaves, let's get one more word from him. Let's get, just let him say one more thing. Dave, um, uh, you heard uh, Edip's uh, reply before he left. He's gone now. Um, what were your uh, thoughts on that? Well, he's a liar and a deceiver, and he doesn't even know his own religion. A good Muslim is supposed to uh, basically do what the Quran says and do what the basically Muhammad did and said in the Hadith and the Sirah. And he's saying he doesn't want to do that, so I guess he's not a good Muslim. But, but I really want to get to the point of the fact that if we're going to talk about the blood sacrifice in Ramadan, this is a dangerous time. This is where the Muslims, when they don't hear from that angel that spoke to uh, Muhammad, they think the only way they can go to heaven is through jihad. And remember what I said at the beginning of the program. Uh, they have get, got to give 2.5% of their wealth as like a tithe, which a Christian would do. But 7.5% of that has to go to jihad. But if they're in war, like they are now, they can give all of their 2.5% to jihad. Folks, we are at war with Islam today. Islam is at war with the world until they get their worldwide caliphate and their worldwide government and Sharia law is the law of the land. That's what they're trying to do in the United States. That's what they're trying to do in England and France and Germany. And it's not working. They're having major problems. Folks, beware during these last 10 days of Ramadan, more is going to happen. Thank you. Uh, I hope not. I hope, I hope that uh, prediction is wrong. But unfortunately, we do know that these last 10 days are a time when the Muslim is told by Islam they have to strive especially to, um, to catch the night of power uh, when the, uh, the sacred uh, tablet supposedly came down from Allah to the lower heaven where the angels are and then the angel brought it down to Muhammad. Um, this night supposedly is supposed to be better than a thousand months where yeah. any deed that you do for Allah is like you did it for 83 years. So if you were to um, be mujahideen and you blow yourself up, it's like you blew yourself up every year for 83 years. You receive all this, all these good deeds so you can enter Jannah. Um, this is, uh, I, I don't understand. I don't understand how anyone can live with that type of teaching 
and not have their soul and their consciousness be bothered by them. Now, Could I inject uh, one thing? Yes, you can. Uh, Muslims out there, read the Bible, because most Muslims don't know anything about Christianity except what they see in movies and TV and so forth and music. Hmm. But read the Bible and find out how many prophet, prophets, there were, there were prophecies that were going to happen in the future. There's hundreds and thousands of them that occurred in Jesus Christ alone. Yes. There's none of that in Islam. Uh, so the very fact, if you're a mathematical person, what's the probability of all these prophecies in the Old Testament coming true in the New Testament? It's infinitesimal. I mean, it, it's like 10 to the 27th power. It's like it's got to be true simply because of all these prophecies that were prophesied in the Old Testament occurred in, in the New Testament, some in the Old Testament. There's none of that in the Quran and the Hadith and the Sira. Mm -hmm. And when he says that he was a Muhammad was a good man, he was a pedophile. He married a six-year-old girl. He consummated the marriage at nine. Uh, he killed people. When he went back to Mecca, when they wouldn't uh, serve him and accept him, he killed, what, six or 700 Jews with his then 12-year-old wife. So, folks, just study the scripture, pray, and if you hear from Allah, ask to, to hear from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He'll speak to you. He'll Amen. talk to you. My good friend, Kamal Amen. Salim, that's what he did. And God spoke to him direct, and he is now Christian, and he speaks out vehemently against Islamic faith. Even though he loves the Muslims, he wants them to come to the Lord, and that's my goal as well. I want them to come to the Lord, but if they're going to come over here and fight and kill and rape, I will fight back. Amen, amen. Now, I'm a prior military guy, so that's kind of going to be my mm -hmm. attitude, and I think that's the way America's starting to see this now, is we have to stop the refugees from coming in the United States for civilization jihad. Amen. Now, we have five more minutes before we go to a break. And uh, Christian Prince, I hope you're still there. I just wanted yes. to ask you, um, since the topic is Ramadan and the blood, human blood sacrifice, according to our Muslim guest who is no longer here, uh, Muhammad was a democratically elected leader. So does that mean that Islam uh, is compatible with democracy? And um, if we instill a Islamic, if, if we had a Muslim president of the United States of America, he would rule with democracy and fairness and equal votes for people of all religions and faiths. You know, uh, uh, this guy, he come with everything uh, which would make him look good, but he cannot prove anything of what he said. Like as an example, when he said that Muhammad was an elected leader of a multi multicultural community, where he get this from? He reject all Islamic history books, but yet he come with something coming from history, not from the Quran. And if you ask him where this coming from, he will hit the door with his foot and he will run like a child. Now, uh, uh, I, I want to say first uh, thank you to Brother David, and I understand that he was an, uh, he's, an, he's a former congressman too, right? Yes. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. So he, he, he lived the politics, and he know the, the, how the, the, the politics atmosphere, atmosphere come with. So I'm glad that he is not politically correct, because mm -hmm. usually when you speak about politics, you speak about people say things not what they should say, you know? Mm -hmm. But this brother here is a great person who say things as it is, and I'm, I'm happy to, to, to have him with us. Amen. Uh, and we need all of us as a Christians. It's military like some, also. Some, yeah, some, some people, they might say, I was very tough on this man. We need to be tough because the truth has to be told as it is. Stop putting makeup on things. Things have to be told as it is. If the shirt of Mr. Dave is yellow, I have to say it's yellow. I cannot say it's red. That is not right. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. So we, we, this is the first thing we need to do. Now, what he said about, about uh, uh, his, his democracy, the Quran say clearly that whatever the prophet he give you, you obey. And whatever the prophet he forbid you, you forbid. Yes. So what is democracy? He's not even asking them, can I do that? Can I, should I do that? Even, even the prayer the Muslims, they do like if we ask this Turkish guy, where you learned how to pray? Is it in the Quran? No. No, 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 no. Where in the Quran it says pray five times? It does not say in the Quran. The Quran says pray only three times. If we ask him how to do ablution, is it in the Quran? He does not know. Mm -hmm. So obviously those people are hypocrite. They are, they are throwing away the history of Islam because the history of Islam full of disasters. Yes. Make Muhammad look ugly and bad. And the only way to clean ourselves is to say this is bad history. It's not us who did it. And those who did write it, they are the enemy of Allah. And suddenly, the history of Muhammad was approved by all Muslims through centuries. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, this history became garbage. Why? 
because people became smarter, more educated, and they come find out that this is nothing but a rubbish. You know, as an example, the hadith says a lot of things. As an example, why the male became a male, according to Muhammad, if the man have orgasm first, the male, the boy will be, a, the, the baby will right. be a male. If the women have orgasm first, the baby will be a female. So the Muslims, in order to get rid of this f- f- funny science, they say, oh, this is not, this is rejected. This is, cannot be true, you know? So, but I understand his reaction because the, when you read the hadith, it should turn you off. It should be shocking. But he's taken a, the wrong, incorrect route. His, uh, Correctly, the, the shock of the hadith in the history of Islam should lead you out of Islam. Now, we have to take a break, and we will be right back. The show is still not over. We still have more to go. Please don't go anywhere. This is the Trinity Channel. I'm C.L. Edwards, callingmuslims.org. We will be right back. To our viewers all over the world, you can watch us by satellite through the following frequencies. For North America and Canada, please join us on the Galaxy 19 satellite. Frequency 11966 horizontal. For Europe and Middle East, join us on the Hotbird satellite. Frequency 12111 vertical. For Australia and New Zealand, please join us on the Optus 2 satellite. Frequency 12546 vertical. For more information, please call the number on your screen or visit us at trinitychannel.com. You can now watch ABN in the Trinity Channel on your iPhone and iPad. Search for ABN Sat in the App Store. You can watch all the following channels. The Arabic Channel, the English Trinity Channel, the Worship Channel, the Surath Channel, the Kurdish Channel, the al Qudus Channel, the Prayer Channel, and a special channel for Europe and the Middle East. For more information, please call the number on your screen or visit us at trinitychannel.com. ABN viewers, to watch free reruns of our marathon shows, apologetic shows, and English programs, go to www.youtube.com and type Trinity Channel. Here at ABN, we make it easier for viewers like you to watch programs. For more information, call us at 248-416-1300. Yes, and welcome back to the Trinity Channel. Um, You are viewing us either through satellite, you're viewing us through live stream. You have the app downloaded. If you don't have the app downloaded, what are you doing? You need to download it. Um, We are here, and I'm your guest, C.L. Edwards of CallingMuslims.org. And we've had a very lively, very in-depth conversation. We've had with us Christian Prince, uh, Dave Ajima, and we had our uh, Muslim of Turkish descent uh, with us for a time over Skype, and that was Edip Yusel. He made very, a lot of claims. He made a lot of claims, and he says that Mohammed was not a murderer. He was not a killer. He was not a false prophet. Um, that uh, the things that you see in the Hadith, Hey, the, that doesn't apply. Those things came from the Jews. They came from the Jews. They were uh, tall tales that somehow made it into Islamic history. And he rejects all of it. He condemned Sunnis and Shia. And at the same time, he tried to condemn Christians and claim that Christians are killing Shia and Sunnis. Uh, and it was hard to really follow and understand a lot of the things he said. But we did give him equal time. We were respectful as much as possible. Um, he began disrespectful, and if he got a bad reaction, it's only because it was a reaction to things that he said. But we do give our Muslim friends and our Muslim callers equal time. We give them time to voice their opinion and to give their answers, and that's exactly what we did. Now, Dave Edgema has left, and we thank Dave for being a part of the show. We thank him for his insight and all the things that he had to say. But we still have Christian Prince, and I believe Christian Prince is still on the line. Are you still there, Christian? Yes, yes, I'm with you. Yes. You now, now, now we were just talking. Uh, we were going, the, the subject of the show is, of course, Ramadan and human blood sacrifices. Now, let me ask you about this title for people who are confused out there who are watching us. We have maybe a, uh, less than half an hour to go. But what is this whole thing about human blood sacrifices? 
What does that have to do with is Ramadan? Islam is a religion of peace. Uh, Muhammad is a, a, a democratically elected leader of a multicultural uh, Medina society. So where does uh, human sacrifice even fit into any of that? Well, if we, if we study Islam, and we study Islamic books, not Christian books, you know, we are not talking about, we are getting our things from Christian books. In Islamic books, they report for us that the biggest bloodshed of, in the history of Islam happened in the month of Ramadan. And the Ra- month of Ramadan is the month of jihad, not just a month of, uh, as they say, fasting, spending the night looking at the moon, watching TV, etc. Mm-hmm. As an example, the, 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 uh, the first attack Muhammad he did in the month of Ramadan, it was Ghazwa to Badr, Badr al-Kubra. Yes. This is was in the month of Ramadan, and he slaughtered a lot of his enemies. And this is was in the second year of Al-Hijra. And then the list continue. Like, wasn't an accident that it happened in Ramadan? I thought Ramadan is the month of peace. No. He attacked Mecca in the eighth year of Al-Hijra, which means after eight years of immigration to Medina. Mm-hmm. He attacked Mecca in Ramadan. And this is, was a big attack for him and big a win for him. Mm-hmm. And the list continue. As an example, there is the attack of Al-Buwayra, or Al-Buwayb. And this is, was in the year 13 for Al-Hijra. And uh, Muhammad, he killed a lot of people in that attack. Uh, uh, and, and the list continue. Fatah uh, al And this is like, you know, those things uh, uh, done by Muhammad and done by the followers of Muhammad after him. Always the month of Ramadan. Actually, the last war we remember, it was in the month of Ramadan, a big war, if we can remember. It was the, the war of 1973 against Israel. Yes. All the Muslim countries, they gather together and they attack Israel in the month of Ramadan. So the month of Ramadan specifically always present bloodshed and killing, and it's a mercy for the Muslims to each other. However, it's a bloodshed for the non-Muslims. Now, we do not talk. We do not talk, really. I, I wish this guy, the Turkish guy, would stay with us because I think he is very fun, and I'd like to have him with us again, but too bad he is, uh, he is very upset, wow. and I hope he is not going to have some uh, kind of uh, heart problem. And still, I invite him to debate me any form he like, anywhere he want, if he dare. Now, if we go, by the way, when we speak about the, uh, the, the month of Ramadan, you will see you know, the problem is people are ignorant, people do not read. Hmm. If you go in the Quran, you will see the Quran saying that you fast for a yamun ma'dudad, which if you, go, if you go to chapter 2, verse number 183, it says, Kutiba siyam, all right? The same as it was for the people before you. What does that mean? Is that Ramadan? Mm-hmm. Who is the people before Muslims? If this is for the Christians and the Jews, well, we don't have Ramadan. No, no. We never heard of Ramadan, and no, no Jews practice Ramadan, and nobody have such a thing. Mm-hmm. So when the Quran confirmed that this is something was a practice for people who before us, all right? Mm-hmm. What is that is about? The Muslims, they believe in something in giving, uh, sacrifice. Like this guy, he said, uh, like he did not answer our questions. We are talking about sacrifice. Uh, you see, the sacrifice of Ramadan at the end of the Ramadan, what is the point of it? I challenge any Muslim to tell me, you sacrifice at the end of the Ramadan, a big sacrifice, and you call it Eid al Adha, which means the day of sacrifice. Now, you sacrifice to who and for what? If Islam is against bloodshed, and you Muslims don't believe in a bloodshed for God, who is the one you are sacrificing to? Now, in this guy, in his in his book, uh, translation, I, I tried to read his translation. I could not understand it because his notes is more than the translation. So I could I, I was able to get to the notes, but I could not see the verse. Hmm. In, back on the time, you know, we know in the Bible it says that Abraham came from a city, it's called Ur. Mm-hmm. And then he immigrated to a city, it's called Haran. Now, Haran, it's a hot city. Haran is coming from like hot. It's a place of like hot place. Now, the people of Haran, every year, they have a problem that their, their God, the God of the moon, disappear. And that is in almost in the third part of, of Marsh. The moon disappear, and that because of, due to, to like, uh, let us say, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, movement of stars and etc. So they cannot see the moon clear and that make them worry about their moon is not coming back. So they decide to fast every year in a certain time for 30 days. Mm. And that was Ramadan. Ramadan is the fasting of the pagan people who believe in the moon god and they are worried about he will not come back. So celebrate, they celebrate at the end of the month when the moon come back. And then they move to the city or that they have a place, certain place to celebrate the coming back of the moon. Mm. Ramadan as a month, the name as it, it is, it was not really what Muhammad is following. It was the tradition of, the, of, of those uh, uh, Sabian from the town of Haran. And Muhammad, he was just copying them to the point he copied something you just mentioned. It says, the night of power, Laylatul Qadr. Yes. And you just said that this night is better than 83 years. And it does not make sense. Like, why if I pray in this year, I will get a power or equal power of 83 years of a praying. That is a pagan belief. Those who use not to be able to have a sexual, uh, like se se succeed, with, like having seeds from their sex. Mm -hmm. Somebody he cannot have kids. Somebody he cannot pr pr uh, succeed with something. He fast in that night. And that night is equal because the moon will be coming back and ready to get from you your request and the God of the moon. And then we fast in this night and we pray all night for the God of the moon. And then that will grant us all the, 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 the things we want to the point this night is called the night of power, the night of amazing things to happen. If you think about it, does it make sense? This night is the same. Actually, if we ask Muslims, which night is the night of, of uh, Al-Qadr? Not even one knows. In, 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 the, in the book of, uh, of Hadith, it says that there is 46 say about which date is the date of Al-Qadr. That's funny because if there is 46, day, 46 uh, uh, says about it and the month is 30 days, that means the says about the date is more than the days of the month. This is how much confused the Muslims they do not know even which night is this night. So those people, in order to present themselves to the moon god, they used to give sacrifice, and this god will grant them a lot of grant, like uh, you want to have good fruits from your trees, you want to have good, uh, you know, we know the god Baal, the god Baal, the god of fertilizing, the, one, the god of fertility. So those people, they worship the moon god, the sky gods, for they grant them their uh, uh, request. And this is what Muhammad told them. Muhammad, he said in the hadith, if a man, he pray to Allah in this night, Allah will forgive the past sin and the coming sin. And this is very funny. And it's not fair. Just because I, I pray this night, my sin in the past and my coming sin I, is forgiven. So you are encouraging me to do more sin. Yes, and you are asking me to do all kinds of sin. And in the same time, it does not make sense because then why I need to pray anymore? If one night is equal to 83 years, listen carefully. Yes. If one night prayer is equal to 83 years, it means I do not need to, to pray for the coming 83 years. So why you are asking me to pray five, five, five times a day? I pray just one night, and this is better than all. And you know what? I will pray this night once a year. 83 years, every, every year I will make in one night prayer. So if you live... Let us get a calculator. I don't know if you are good in mathematics. <laughs> if we if we calculate, let us say I will live for 60 years. Okay. Right? And then I, I will, each, each, each night I pray from a little qadr is going to be equal to uh, uh, 83 years. That will be 83 x 60. That means I, I will pray in my life 4,980 mm -hmm. days. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 the, the 83 uh, prayer, 60, 60 prayer, sorry will be equal to 4,980 years. Yes. That's madness. <laughs> you know? No Either Muhammad was there's exaggerating no, There's, there's no need to wake up, up for, uh, for Fajr. Who wants to wake up in the, in the morning to pray Fajr? Who wants to uh, stay out, you know? Yeah, what for? Uh, what for? Just to pray once a year. One, uh, pray once a year. Uh, and for the coming 60 years, that will be equal almost to 5,000 years of a prayer. So what the point of all of Islam and the Hajj? And what the Hajj for? If Allah forgive me my past and my coming sin, what hmm. the Hajj for? What is the bridge over here, over here for? 
yeah, well, everything, everything is gone. There's no need, actually. You know, so uh, uh, Muhammad is copying the pagans, and this is a pagan ritual. And actually, there's a hadith where Muhammad, once he was walking between the Jews, and he saw a bunch of Jews, and he said to them, uh, uh, why you are not eating? They said, uh, today we are fasting. They said, this is what? They said, this is the day where Moses was delivered from the Pharaoh. So Muhammad, he said, you know what? If Moses fasted, we better to fast it more than you because Moses belonged to us more than he belonged to you. And he mm -hmm. started fasting Ashura. Mm -hmm. Then he come with a new fasting. You know, because Muhammad, he don't have religion. He start, he trying to build a religion, trying to copy. So he come with the fasting, a new fasting. It's called the fast of David. And then he said to his followers, we should fast the fast of David. And that is two days we fast and one day we eat or three days. Now, what is the fast of David and why you are copying and what happened to it? The Muslim, they say the fasting of Ashura and the fasting of David is abrogated by the fasting of Ramadan. Mm. If Ramadan is so important to the point, even Allah, he sent the Quran in Ramadan. Why Muhammad is trying to find a day to fast in? Why Allah did not tell him from the beginning? You know, you know what? This is a day you should fast. In the Quran, chapter 2, verse 184, it says, the days of fasting is a yamun ma'adudat, few days, not 30, not a month. That, what you just said makes perfect sense. If, the, if, the, if Muhammad received his first encounter during the month of Ramadan, he received the first verses of the Quran during the month of Ramadan, you, wouldn't he have just set that date from the beginning? We're going to fast Ramadan. Anything. And there is no fasting in the Quran, you know. The, the Quran never speak about fasting from food. As you see, and even it says, ayyamun, ayyamun ma'dudat, which means a few days. Few days in Arabic, it have to be between, between three to nine. It cannot be, it cannot be ten. Mm -hmm. It cannot be, it, uh, uh, it cannot be ma'dudat. It means you can count them by your, by your fingers. You know what I mean? Yes. It's what ma'dudat means. You can count them by your hand. So, if this is what the Quran is saying, where do you come with the month of 30 days? This is not... In the Quran, this is from the Sabian, Muhammad, he practiced. Muhammad always, he copied from others. He liked the ideas. He adopted the ideas. Uh, and, and there is tons of hadith and tons of stories. Now, as long as the Quran mentioned that Mary, she was told to fast, you know, the, the, the verse in the Quran in chapter 19, verse 26, mm -hmm. the Quran says that eat and drink. And if somebody asks you, says, I'm fasting. From what? From talking. So according to the Quran, fasting is fasting from talking. It's not fasting from eating. But there's this guy, the Turkish guy who was with us. Yeah. He said, I don't follow the hadith. I follow only the Quran. Okay, show me where in the Quran it says you fast from eating. It doesn't say that. The Quran confirm only one kind of fasting. That is fasting from speaking. Yes. Which can be found in the Quran. And you see, <laughs> the problem with Muslims they get offended as as soon you say to them the answer they are they, they just he he just call us all kind of names yes you don't get offended mm -hmm. and he don't say like you know what i'm calling them liars killers thieves corruptor etc etc it's okay to offend us but the second you start giving him the answer he start to cry and i'm going to leave <laughs> and i cannot stay and etc well, how come you offend us and you call us all kinds of names and we stay? It's all right. Now, if we continue actually in this topic, this topic is really big. Like now I'm, 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 I'm working in a book. It's, it's going to be called mostly the roots of the Quran. Mm -hmm. Additional to my first book, The Deception of Allah and Quran and Science. And now I have a French book. It's called The Secret du Prophet Arab. The, the fourth book is going to explain where all these stories Muhammad is coming with and all is supported with the clear evidence which Muslims cannot deny. And as you know, we do not use a Christian resource. We use Muslim resource. And even those who claim to be Quran only, they cannot refute it. For Quran never been a book to follow. As an example, the Quran itself confirmed that you have to obey the Prophet and whatever he forbid, you forbid. Yes. Now, in order to obey the Prophet, you have to follow what he said. Yes. Not only what the Quran said. You see, when the Quran, as an example, in chapter uh, 4, verse number 59, mm -hmm. it says, Ya amanu, Allah wa Rasul. 
all who you believe obey Allah and the Prophet. So this is mean we have to cop we have to keep yes. two words, the words of Allah and the words of the Prophet. So if you deny the hadith, it's mean you are obeying half of Islam because you have to obey both. Can I obey only Allah without obeying Muhammad? No. There is many things Muhammad, he says, abrogate the Quran. He As an example, where in the Quran we can find the stoning to death? It's not there. Mm -hmm. It is in the Hadith. As an example, the woman, if she is divorced, she has to wait for four uh, for, for months. Okay, where we can, what we would do then, there's a contradiction. Yes. Uh, uh, it, there is many things. So if we don't follow Muhammad teaching, then Islam is missing, and this is what you know. And this is one of the funny things about Muslims. They say to us, "Quran is the book of God." Well, how come the book of God is not perfect, complete without the words of Muhammad? It's, and you're right. And when you said that, you reminded me of another verse in the Quran that's after the one you just quoted in uh, Surah four fifty six. No, Surah four fifty four. Allah supposedly says, "But no, they can have no faith." Until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in everything and they find within themselves no dispute. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, you know, uh, the, logic, uh, uh, the logic of Muslims they, they come with, uh, it's, it's always, it's, uh, they are the ones who pick up their cherries. So we are the people who corrupt our Bible. And by the way, when a Muslim, he speaks, uh, that Christians corrupt the Bible, I advise the Christians not to defend. Because a Muslim, when he say that, he is attacking the Bible sent by Allah, not my Bible. Mm -hmm. So the Muslims is proving to us again that Allah cannot be God. Allah, he sent a book, it's called the Bible, and then he could not protect it. So what's my problem? Well, even this, you know? this Edip guy, um, according to Sunniism, um, the Sunnah is a, a wahi, it's a revelation, it's the second revelation, as you just told us. Um, but this guy says the second revelation has been corrupted by Jews. <laughs> uh, you know, he says that the hadith is written long after Muhammad. Well, the Quran you have is written when? It's written after. The, old, the, 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 the oldest copy of the Quran, the Muslims they have today, is written 700 years after Muhammad. And nobody have any original copy of the Quran, not even one manuscript. Mm -hmm. The Muslims, they were so happy, if you remember, for Birmingham, uh, uh, manuscript which is one page yeah. two sides one page and even that page it says very close to the Quran today which means it's not the same mm. they don't have any manuscript and each manuscript we find of the Quran contradict the other one so when you say you don't follow the hadith but you accept a book written even after the hadith what is do you have the original book uh, they say to you, the original book, the older original book, Muslims they have is right now in Turkey. According to Muslims, it is a 300 years old after Muhammad. Uh, According to Muslims. Now, According now, to scientists, 700 years. Not to cut you off, but we do have a caller, and we only have like maybe five minutes left in the program. So we want to give, uh, we want to let the caller, caller make a statement or a question. And uh, I believe his name is Kaz from New York. Uh, yes, it's a, <laughs> I'm a woman, but that's oh, sorry. fine. Sorry, that's sorry. okay. I was just wondering, and I'm sorry if maybe this was already brought up, I'm not sure. Okay. But the, they talked about, uh, the, uh, the Muslim man talked about the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the Sunnis and the Shiites. Yes. And I was just wondering, uh, I also heard of the Ahmadiyya, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Mm -hmm. But I was wondering if they all have take this... Um, choice to do jihad for lack of a better term or terrorism if they all fall under that under ramadan I, fantastic show thank you love it love it love it and yeah. i'll be quiet and just if anybody could briefly answer that for me thank uh, you cp did you hear that question uh, i'm not sure what, what it was uh, the voice wasn't clear can you tell me uh, she okay. said uh, you, you want to you you still there well, the, the th i know of three types of muslim uh -huh. Sunni, Shia, and Ahmadin, I'm, I'm the last one I'm not saying correctly. But I'm wondering if they all subscribe to the thought during Ramadan for, besides fasting, but take the uh, oath, so to speak, to commit jihad. Right. Did that come across yeah. clearly? Yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. You know what? First of all, there's no three kind of Muslims or four kind or five kind. All of them at the end of the day, 
they share the same ideology. You know, the coin have two faces, and that is because of the nature of the coin. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no coin have one face. So let's say Shia and Sunni, and then we say Ahmadiyya and this guy, and we make as many coins as we want, but the coin itself, all of it, it's based on the Quran. Mm -hmm. And the Quran stated clearly that jihad is a duty of every Muslim, and jihad can be done in many ways. Either for the one who can go and fight, he should go and fight. But the one who cannot go and fight, he should support the fight by his money, by his effort, by his donation. Mm -hmm. He has to give from his money, from his time, like you can arm uh, a soldier. You cannot go to war, no problem. You are sick, no problem. Uh, you are old, no problem. But you have to donate money for those who can go for war. So everybody share in the jihad. Jihad is not a process for fighters only. It's for all. However, all those Muslims, they believe in jihad and they practice jihad. But all of them, they agree that we should practice taqiyya, which means in front of the enemy who is strong, we play that we are nice until we get strong. The Quran says, cry not for peace when you are the uppermost. So if you are the uppermost, uh, uh, then you can break the peace agreement. And this is exactly what Muhammad, he, he did when he was uh, uh, weak. He, uh, you know, he said, I'm a peaceful man. I don't want to fight anyone, etc. Yes, yes. But when he, dis when he became strong, he, he came with the chapter of Atoba. A, ch a, a chapter of Atoba starts with the Bara. Bara, what does that mean? I wash, I wash my hands from all the peace agreement I did with the non-Muslims. And now it is the time for us to attack them. Like in chapter 47, verse number 35, 35 says, cry not for peace unless you are the uppermost. Ah. So that is the rule of Islam. All of them, always they have to do jihad, not only Ramadan. Now we, we have another caller. Are... We have another caller. And uh, we got maybe five minutes left in the show. So we, let's try to squeeze this caller in with his question or comment. We have a surge. Are you there? Yes. Yes, I am here. Thank okay. you. You have a comment or question? Uh, a little comment, a quick one, just to say thanks for, for the show. It's a brilliant one and a uh, fantastic one. And uh, we look forward, uh, personally, I look forward to have uh, a special and uh, Christian Prince back again. Maybe we will, hopefully we'll find somebody to debate, to debate him. Yeah, that would, be, that would be a great thing to see. I would want yeah. to see that show. Yes, and my question it was, uh, I would have asked the question to the, uh, the Turkish descendant, I cannot pronounce his name properly, uh, but unfortunately he left. It was yeah, oh, yes. about the... Uh, it was about the Quran. He said uh, the Quran uh, it was a book uh, from God, but the Quran itself says that uh, it's a satanic book. Mm. Uh, the Christian prince has spoken about that. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you, so you're saying that uh, Edip, uh, our, our former guest who was on earlier, he said it was a book from God, but you see it as a book from Shaitan, the, the Satan. Um, yeah. And uh, Christian prince, what say you about that particular comment? Wishing that you have some Muslim to, dream, to, dream, to debate me, I say to you, keep dreaming. They will never do so. All right? Now, about uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Quran is the book of Shaitan. The Quran confirmed that. So if this guy, he is a Muslim Quran only. Uh -huh. And the Quran says, Allah will delete from the Quran the verses which is given by the Shaitan. How we will know which verses it is from the Quran and how we will know that this verse itself is not made by the shaitan. As long as you are saying to me, shaitan, and this is in chapter 22, verse number 52, shaitan gave verses to Muhammad and Muhammad recited the verses and Muhammad yes. did not notice and he went home and after two weeks, suddenly, angel, he came to him and he said, you know what? Uh, the verses you, you, you recited, it is from shaitan. Hmm. All right? Now what happened, Muhammad was playing hypocrite in front of the pagan like him. So he worshipped their idols and he thought the believers would not see him. So when the news spread about him worshipping the idols, he decided to fix it because a lot of people, they noticed that he is a hypocrite, he's a liar. So he said, oh, you know what, this is a verses, those verses I said when I was there, it's from shaitan and Allah will take them off. Now this is my challenge to the Muslims, which verses Allah will take off? Chapter 22, verse 52 says, Whatever shaitan he gave Muhammad, we will take it off. How we will know which ones, especially the Muslims, they memorize the verses in their heart. 
Allah will make all the Muslims forget the Quran. I thought the Quran is preserved. And how Allah accept such a thing to happen to his prophet, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, which is protected by Allah. You know, the Quran confirmed that Muhammad is protected uh, uh, from the Satan and nobody can, like sh Shaitan, have no authority over Muhammad or even Muslims. And Muhammad in the, in the Quran confirmed in chapter uh, 15, I think 1542, mm -hmm. confirmed, it says, mm -hmm. My followers, Allah saying, my followers, which means the Muslims, you shaitan, you have no authority up, upon them except those who follow thee. Which means in order for shaitan to give you satanic verses, you have to be a follower of shaitan. Because the Quran confirmed, shaitan have no authority, have no power over somebody, he follow Allah. So sounds like you, you need to tell me. To me. <laughs> yeah. You know? It sounds like reason to me. But we've come to the end of the show, unfortunately. We could probably go on another hour talking about this. But I hope you guys learned something from the show, whether you're Muslim, you're not Muslim. If you came in halfway through the show, you got here towards the end, this is a show that you need to go onto YouTube. You need to look up Trinity Channel, and you need to find the show once it's up. It'll probably be, probably be up later on tonight, if not tomorrow. Get the show. Watch it again. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Twitter. Email the link to your friends. Email the link to the Muslims that you know. Muslims who have an open mind, watch the show and email it to other Muslims. So you can learn, so you can see the truth for yourself. Like I said in the beginning of the show, this show is not about Islamophobia. Nobody's afraid of Islam. Uh, this show is about exposing truth. And when we quote from the Quran and we quote, quote from the Hadith and we quote from the Sirah of the Prophet Muhammad, who you say is a prophet, we're just simply quoting what Muslim scholars have put together and bound in books. We haven't invented this stuff. We didn't come up with this information. And for any Muslim who wants to deny the Hadith and he wants to deny the history and you just want to be Quran only, you're not being truthful. So you claim to be Quran only. What you do in reality is you take the Quran and you invent your own Sunnah and you invent your own Tafsir. So who are we to trust? I don't trust the Quran. I don't trust the Hadith. I tr trust in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He has provided a sure shot, unescapable, immutable salvation for me. I don't put my trust in Muhammad. And I advise you not to put your trust in Muhammad. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah. What's the point of having a Messiah? What's a Messiah? Find out. Read the Bible. Thank you for tuning in, being our guest. We thank all the callers who came in. And we're sorry for any caller that had to wait a long time. Uh, it was, you saw the show. You saw what happened. So keep tuning in to the Trinity Channel. Keep supporting us. Keep supporting me, C.L. Edwards, at callingmuslims.org. And we thank you so much, and God bless you.